Hi, welcome to the bathtub, where when you hear this music, and you see a copy of this old book, Astounding, by Alec Navala Lee, um, about John Campbell, Isaac Asimov, blah, 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 in the golden age of science fiction, you know we're dusting off a really old chestnut for our theme show, our theme shows that we forgot we were running, which is called In the Footsteps of Astounding. So it's basically, it was inspired by the fact that this was a really fun book about the you know, formative years of science fiction with John W. Campbell creating all these kind of, you know, organizing all these great writers and, and putting them together in that magazine. And uh, we're going to talk about writers who came out of there who, who may be those three people. He focuses on L. Ron Hubbard, Robert Heinlein, and Isaac Asimov. But a lot of, lot of interesting writers came out of Astounding, including H.P. Lovecraft, which I was surprised I, I, I had forgotten or I'd, may have known and forgot and may never have known. But he even published with uh, John W. Campbell one of his most famous stories, At the Mountains of Madness, which I'm reading right now. So uh, we have a few things we want to talk about today. The world's burning down. Um, Trump is catching up to Biden in the polls. We're totally fucked. We're all fucked. And uh, the, the world, the, there's not much. And the coronavirus is just coming. It hasn't even come back for its second leg. So we're just going to spend a lot of time in the bathtub and, and try not to worry too much. I wanted to talk a little bit because we have a sponsor. I've mentioned them before. Am, uh, it's called Acma. It's one of those beautiful, it's a beautiful, they, they got a big branding company, a big a Madison Avenue group to come up with this great uh, acronym. Amazon and the Washington Post can kiss my ass. I don't really know who these people are. I know they support us here at the bathtub. I'm moving this out of the way. Um, and uh, they support us quite regularly here at the bathtub. And it's a shadowy, nebulous organization, possibly quasi-illegal. Um, I, I don't think they're connected to Antifa, but who knows, they could be. They're, they're like a Pynchon-esque, uh, they maybe exist and maybe they're just part of our collective imagination. They're like Tristero system or something. They're, they're out there, their basic operating premise is that we can't, we can't kill Amazon and, we can, and, and the Washington Post and everything that Bezos and these creeps uh, throw at us and, and the way they treat their part-time employees, but we can try to underfeed them. So we're trying not to use Amazon, anything that Bezos owns and, and wherever he treats part-time employees poorly, like the Washington Post treats uh, part-time employees poorly, we are trying to find other ways of buying things. So I'm buying most of my books away from Amazon. I mean, I, I post different links. Whenever someone puts links to good independent bookshops, I post them on our Facebook page. It's called Ultimate Beginners if you want to check it out. I just want to say really briefly that it's not really easy. You know, it's, it's not easy buying stuff that's not from Amazon. It's really hard. And I want as an example, I've done pretty well in the past, you know, couple of months. And, and for the past two years, I've been weaning myself off Amazon as much as possible. But the other day, it's kind of interesting, I, I decided I was going to buy a new hummingbird feeder. Because we have lots of hummingbirds here at the, at the uh, bathtub. We don't, we don't make a big deal of it, but we have a lot of hummingbirds here. And they come and go. And we wanted to get a hummingbird feeder with a special guard because the wasps and the bees have been kind of attacking our hummingbird feeder. So I ordered this. And I, I, the first place it popped up when you start searching is Amazon. It's cheap. It's only four, it, it's free. Or you buy two of them, it's free shipping and all that stuff. And I was really tempted. I almost went to Amazon. I said, no, I'm not doing it. So instead I went online. I found an independent distributor of this same product. It's by, who's it made? It's by Perky Pet. And it's supposed to be the number one uh, hummingbird feeder that's got the protective deals on them. Okay. So I order it. Uh, it costs me about 8 or $10 more. And the shipping fee from direct to this independent company was a lot higher than Amazon. But I said, screw it. I don't want Bezos to get a nickel. So I'm really fascinated by the fact that the book, the, the, the item I bought arrives in an Amazon box. I swear to God, I'm not kidding. It comes in a big Amazon box. Look at it. This big, it's two boxes inside, huge waste, goes in a giant thing filled with plastic stuff. This independent distributor, this is how I see it. The independent distributor charges us 18 or $20 for shipping, and then they just ordered it off Amazon and sent it to us. I'm pretty sure that's what they did. And so they pocketed all the profits, and they charged us ridiculous amounts for the shipping. And, of course, Amazon, they probably got it for free. Anyway... It's not easy. It's just not easy. But we'll do our best, and we're going to keep doing it. Okay. So today we're going to talk about two writers who um, you probably don't know. There, there are two writers who I've read off and on when I was a kid, and it's Henry Kuttner, 
We talked about him a bit last week because he was a big influence on Ray Bradbury. He helped Ray Bradbury a lot. He was one of the friends, older friends, who kind of uh, uh, gave, who read his work really carefully and 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 and, and helped Bradbury. He was a big friend to Bradbury, and C. L. Moore, and C. L. Moore was Catherine Moore, who I met in an elevator once. It's not even worth doing a story about. But I actually met her briefly in an elevator once at a science fiction convention when I was like fifteen or sixteen or something. And C.L. Moore, who I'd never really read that much. I have read her in her collaborations. Now, these two writers were early, were early writers for Campbell. And he was the first one, I guess, who got them together writing. They had met each other and knew each other for many years because they had actually met through, I didn't realize this until I was going back through my notes, by Lovecraft introduced them. They were both big fans of Lovecraft. And I believe they both wrote for Weird Tales. And the writer that both um, Lovecraft, and this is the collected letters of Clark Ashton Smith, who I love, uh, they both loved C.L. Moore's work. And, and I've started going back over C.L. Moore's work, and I can understand why. She's really, really good, really fun. But anyway, Kuttner was, the, was a hugely successful pulp writer. He wrote for all the science fiction magazines, detective magazines. He wrote under different pseudonyms. He was a, technically a really smart writer. He's funny. He's, he's quick. He tends to write longish 30, 40-page stories, science fiction, a bit of satiric element in them. Um, and he wrote for all sorts of people. And he could write quickly and well. Moore comes along kind of separately, so before she met Kuttner and they got married, she had written some stories, particularly for, um, for Weird Tales, that were really unusual. I had not really read her, her stuff that's published by herself before. And in the past week or so, while the world's falling apart around me, I decided to read something totally escapist, and I read her famous story, Shamblo, or Shamblu, and I read several other stories in this these great old Ballantyne or Del Rey best of collections that came out in the seventies. Um, that's Cutner and there's more. And she's a really, really good, interesting, strange writer. There tend to be uh, uh, they tend to be kind of long stories, and they tend to be kind of instead of like a lot of episodes, like a Henry Cutner story, they tend to be one long scene, so or one long narrative. Uh, for example, there's one amazing story in here. I think it's called... She created this... Uh, a woman... Um, what would you call it? Like Conan, you know, sword and sorcery hero named Jiral of, jo of Jory. I don't know how you pronounce that right. And in the first of the stories that she wrote, Black God's Kiss, it's about a woman who wants to get revenge against some, some, some knight or something. I can't remember now. And she goes off on a quest into this kind of shadowy realm in the castle to find the one weapon that will really make this man suffer. And it, it, so it, the almost the entire story is just her journeying through all these kind of strange and fantastic landscapes in the shadows of this castle until she finds the weapon that is most damaging to this, this man she hates. And what it is is a kiss. It's a really kind of a brilliant story. She finds these stone lips, and and the stone lips are pursed for a kiss. She kisses the stone lips and takes that back to this guy. I kind of spoiled that story if you haven't read it, but it's a brilliant story. All of her stories tend to have this kind of long narrative flow to them. Uh, she does a lot of, they're very kind of lush, romantic, strange stories. They remind me a lot of Clark Ashton Smith and Love, some of the late Lovecraft. Um, and, and both those writers have really admired her. There's, there's, I was reading, reading through some of the references in these, these letters between Lovecraft and Smith, and they were both talking about, you know, the best, S, the best story they were looking forward to in every magazine was by C.L. Moore. Um, she's really fun and really interesting writer, and I'm, I'm going to continue reading more C.L. Moore. Um, there's, um, the, the, she eventually, she keeps the name C.L. Moore. Now, normally when women have that used that name in the pulps, it was to hide the fact that they were women because a lot of the publishers and editors didn't want to publish work by women. They thought women weren't good science fiction writers. I guess that was the story. But according to Moore, she didn't, she didn't use the C.L. Moore for the editors, who she said didn't care. But she did it because her, she didn't want people at her office. She worked in some like boring job, and she was an office 
had an office job, and she didn't want them to know she was writing science fiction, weird science fiction stories. She was sick as a young kid, very sick, and uh, uh, and, and had bad health until she got older and went to work. And then she wanted she wrote these strange and unusual stories, really worth reading. Um, she met Cutner, and I'm not going to say too much more about them except that Cutner uh, and her marry. And what's really interesting about them is that they start to write together. And I guess the story is that they wrote lots of stories together as Lewis Paget. I don't have a, one of the books that were published as Lewis Paget, but it's it became kind of impossible to tell which parts of which stories and which stories were written by which of the two writers. They kind of blended together. So, for example, one of the most famous stories... One of the most famous stories, which I haven't read in a long time, is Vintage Season. It's published here as both Cutner and Moore, but in this volume it's published just by C.L. Moore in the same way that a very famous story that they wrote as Lewis Paget, Mimsy Were the Bora Grows, deliberate reference to uh, Lewis Carroll. Um, that story, which is a kind of a brilliant story that Campbell published in Astounding, about a bunch of toys alien toys that come to some kids find them on, on Earth. And these alien toys are designed, like most kids' toys, to teach fundamental concepts, squares, triangles, and so forth, but in alien language. And these kids develop this kind of alien sense of the world. It's kind of a, It still holds up. It was published in the 30s. It's still kind of a brilliant story. So you can't really tell when, who published which. The, the C.L. Moore style, which is the really much more lush Far, much more like Lovecraft, much more like Clark Ashton Smith than Moore, kind of submerges itself. You can't really tell which, when she's in these stories or not. They were famous for supposedly having typewriters in the house, and they would work on stories, I guess, and they would leave it half finished in the store in the typewriter, and the other writer would come along and just finish it up, and they could they could adapt it to the style of each individual story. Um, this is Northwest Smith. I just picked this up. These are all by C.L. Moore for the most part. And Sham Blue, which is a really interesting science fiction-y sort of story about a, you know, a kind of Han Solo space adventurer. And he meets this creature who's an alien creature who, uh, who he basically submits himself to, to be a, uh, the, to be her, she's a parasite. And he submits himself to her parasitism because it makes him happy. That's what this this creature does to people as it's sucking them dry. It's a kind of it's still an unusual story and a beautifully written story. I have a lot of uh, a lot of Cutner and Moore. Again, they're published under different names. Earth's Last Citadel. I haven't read. Return to Otherness. I picked up. I've been picking up a lot of Cutner and Moore, and I want to read more as we uh, as as the world falls apart. And as we wait for hopefully the next Trump, hopefully not the next Trump administration. Anyway, stay safe. Um, you know you gotta watch out for those bastards. I'm mean, just all I can tell you. They, they they're like they're like that succubus. They're gonna suck us all dry. So we gotta try to buy from the end, in, buy from the sources. It's not easy. And uh, I really recommend. This is maybe a good place to start with both of these interesting writers. If you find a couple of these old copies on eBay or through independent bookshops, the best of Henry Cutner, the best of C.L. Moore. I, I uh, like these volumes anyway. This has an introduction, one of the few introductions that Ray Bradbury wrote, because Ray Bradbury loved both of these writers. He knew them both personally, and the the tragedy of Cutner was he was a kind of a he was really a brilliant writer, and he and um, he quit writing. In his 40s, he'd written tons of work, and he went back to college, he went to UCLA, and he died, I believe, as a heart attack, very, a very young man. So, uh, and, and Moore really pretty much, she wrote a little bit after that, but not a lot. And so her career kind of ended with his. It's a, it's a sad, uh, truncated uh, life for both of them, because they were both extremely interesting writers. Okay, happy bathing, stay safe. Don't, you know, watch out. Akma, just, Akma says we can't be perfect, but we're going to do our best to try not to buy from these creeps. And we'll see you all soon. And please feel free to post uh, links to all the booksellers you love and independent uh, producers of good quality merchandise that's not these horrible companies. Okay. Happy bathing.